A previous video looked at an inexpensive digital multimeter and found that it was probably good enough for many purposes. While examining the unit, we noticed the test leads that came in the box were actually pretty bad and limited the performance of the meter, at least on measurements related to resistance and continuity. When we replaced those leads with higher quality leads, the performance improved, and I made the comment that investing in good leads is generally not a bad thing to do. I stand by that comment and began thinking in the meantime about what constitutes higher quality in test leads. In this video, we'll look at a few test leads I've collected over time and talk about what limits their usefulness. One of the things we'll explore is the lead resistance, and we'll perform measurements on the resistance of several leads. This is something that mostly you cannot do using the resistance function on a standard multimeter because the resistance is, or at least it should be, much less than an ohm we'll have to perform a four-wire measurement, so we'll introduce that and show how to do it on the bench if your multimeter doesn't include that functionality. So, let's get started. Here are four test leads that I've collected over time, uh, two of which came with multimeters that I purchased, uh, and the other two of which I purchased separately online. You might recognize this from a previous video. This is the lead, or one of the two leads, that came with the Tech Power digital multimeter. This is a somewhat generic uh, test lead that was purchased from an online dealer that looks suspiciously close to test leads that come with other brand name meters. This is a test lead that came with a very nice Amprobe AM160A digital multimeter. And then finally, you might recognize from the last video, this is a, a test lead that was purchased from ProbeMaster. So the first thing that I wanted to do is just kind of talk about the physical aspects uh, that uh, uh, come to mind when picking test probes. Uh, so as, as I mentioned before, this has a fairly cheap feeling uh, plastic case. The wire connecting to the test probe is pretty stiff, uh, doesn't feel good in the hands. And the problem with that is that oftentimes you get tangled up when you're trying to work on a piece of equipment and you've got this stiff wire that you have to contend with. And you can see how stiff it is by, if I hold, hold the test probe by the wire, uh, you can see it's pretty stiff, right? I mean, it doesn't bend, so it's not very flexible at all. Let me see if I can just set this up here in real time. Don't know if you can make it out, if I can get it to focus here. I probably can't. There we go. At the end of the tip of the probe, you can see it doesn't come down to a fine point. In fact, it, it's actually a, kind of a little hemisphere there. It, 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 it looks like a ballpoint pen. And that's not generally something that uh, is desirable because when you're probing, you know, a solder joint or a piece of metal, you want it to uh, make really good contact. And, you know, spheres don't do that, points do. So there's, uh, there's that lead. Now let's set that aside and look at this test lead. So let's look at the tip first. We can get it to focus in there. There we go. Uh, and you can see that this, this comes down to a pretty good point. There's, there's no ball on the end of this. So let's uh, set that aside. The, uh, the body of the test lead feels, uh, feels pretty good. It doesn't kind of make your skin want to crawl with the, uh, with the quality of the of the plastic and you can see that this wire is much more flexible right I can hold it down here and the test lead bends down uh, and in fact you know it feels it feels much better better in the hand uh, so set that one aside one thing I should point out about the previous two test leads is that um, the metal uh, that they're made out of the test lead, you know, probe tip themselves. I don't know what they are exactly. It might be stainless steel. Um, 
they might also have you know some sort of nickel coating. I'm I'm not really sure, but but they're silver and shiny. These test leads uh, bring them a little bit closer. You can see that they're not silver; that they're they're gold, and I mean that literally. These are gold plated um, probe tips. But let's not get ahead of ourselves. So here's the probe tip that came with the amp probe meter, and uh, it's it's very very flexible. It doesn't kink down as much as the other one because because this uh, silicon um, uh, probe is very light. So you can see that it's uh, it's very flexible, very pliable, and not something that you're likely to get tangled up in when you're working on a piece of equipment. Uh, so that's very nice. They're also very small, so uh, they're easy to hold in the hand, uh, so easy to direct. And just looking here now at the probe tip, you can see it, it comes down into a point. Uh, so, uh, you know, mechanically you can, you know, kind of dig your way into a wire or solder connection and make very good contact. And then lastly, here's the Probe Master probe. And you can see that it's a very sharp tip. Very sharp indeed, I can, I can assure you. Um, and another nice thing that uh, was present on one of the former one of the former leads is that uh, there's a if we can get it focused here there's a thread at the base of the probe tip for uh, screwing um, accessories onto like alligator clips and things like that uh, again this is feels very good in the hand this is very flexible down here with the strain relief so it's very easy to hold this and direct it in a, in a circuit. This is extraordinarily pliable, um, silicon insulated wire. And uh, there's, just, there's just no way that you're going to get tangled up in this like you would a very stiff wire. So those are some of the physical aspects uh, that make uh, probe, probe leads or, or test leads maybe more desirable versus less desirable. So the next thing that I wanted to do is to measure the resistance of these different test leads. And so you might think, well, just grab a, your multimeter and set it to the resistance function and measure away. So here I've got a, a, a fairly decent uh, meter. This is an Amprobe AM160A. Uh, so the first thing that you know we might imagine doing is uh, taking our probes and shorting them out and you see that this reads uh, about 0 0.07 uh, 0 0.06 somewhere in there ohms which would be uh, 60 milli ohms so we could uh, we could zero that out might as well go ahead and do that so there it is so I've subtracted out essentially the resistance of the probe leads themselves and now if I measure the resistance of uh, a few inches of copper wire, I see it's 0 0.03 ohms uh, in, the, in the neighborhood of that. And so the question is, is that accurate? And we generally don't know. So the question is, is what, what do those readings mean that we just took? Uh, we got resistances on the order of 30 milliohms. Um, can we trust that? And um, we're going to examine that momentarily. But if you have a, a meter that uh, doesn't have that much resolution past the decimal point, you might read 0, 0.0 ohms or 0 0.1 ohms, uh, which would be you know, 100 milliohms. And in which case, what do you make of that? So in order to measure the resistance of something that has very low uh, resistance, like a piece of wire or the test leads, one needs to resort to a measurement technique known as a four-wire approach. So there's nothing mysterious about the four-wire approach. It sounds exotic, but it's really nothing more than an application of Ohm's law. So let's, uh, let's think about this. Uh, suppose you have a constant current source and you're trying to measure a resistance in a very simple circuit like this. So you have your resistance R and this constant current source provides a current I 
through the circuit. Well, if you could imagine measuring the potential difference across this resistor, like that, then you have everything you need to compute the resistance from Ohm's law. And in particular, if you divide through by I, you can compute the resistance. So now if you measure I and you measure V, uh, or in this case E, as I've written it for EMF, you know what the resistance is. And this is really nothing more than the four wire measurement. So this is thought of as wire one, and this is thought of as wire two, and this is wire three, and this is wire four. So the question is, well, how do you get a constant current source? And the answer to that is if you have a power supply that can limit the current, then you can set it uh, to uh, essentially a short circuit condition and uh, you've got a, a, a constant current that you can measure with a DMM. And then with the voltmeter, another DMM, you can measure the voltage drop across, across a wire or a, a, a very low resistance. So let's, uh, let's show how you can wire that up and measure the resistance of that piece of copper wire that we tried to measure directly with the Amprobe DMM and see how the measurements compare to one another. Here I've wired up um, a very modest power supply and uh, I've set it for roughly one volt output, which uh, is more or less irrelevant for the calculation that we're going to make, for the measurement we're going to make. Uh, and uh, I can control the current uh, with the uh, current limiting potentiometer here. Uh, and so all I've done is I've set up a circuit that uh, will put uh, our resistance uh, between these two leads, so current comes out goes through a set of leads into this BK Precision DMM that we will use as an ammeter, so we'll measure the current out of that, uh, back through the ammeter, and then on the return leg of the circuit, back to the power supply. It's very, very simple to wire. All right, so let's uh, just show here what we're doing. So we'll measure voltage with the red meter and current with the uh, blue and white meter. So let's set this to milliamps and we'll set this to DC volts. And uh, let's get our wire here. So this is just you know a piece of uh, 18 gauge copper wire. And we're going to have first two wires of the circuit set up like that, okay? And you can see that uh, I, can, I can change the current by adjusting the current limiting pot on the power supply. And it doesn't matter what you, uh, what you pick. I'm going to set it for something as close to 10 milliamps as possible because then you will essentially multiply the voltage by 100 to get the resistance in ohms. Okay, and so now what we're going to do is we're going to, with this meter, measure the voltage drop across the same resistance. So let's uh, get the probe tips in here. And uh, let's just increase the resolution on this. And so you see that you get 0 0.000, we'll call it 1.6 volts. Okay, so let me just record that. And when you do the math, you get 0 0.0158 ohms or 15.8 milliohms. So that's the resistance of this length of wire. Uh, but again, you know, we've wired this up on, on the bench, and the question is, is well, can we, can we really believe that? 
uh, you know, why believe that versus what I measured directly with the amprobe meter to begin with. Well, uh, we can at least see if the measurement gives the right trend by uh, cutting a piece of wire from the same spool, but is uh, twice the length and measuring the resistance of that. So here's such a wire and uh, we'll just proceed to hook it up here. So this is what we're doing. And uh, just adjust the current a little bit here. Although again, there's no need to do that. All right, and now we're going to measure the voltage drop and 0 0.00022 volts. So let me do that calculation next. And when you do the division there, you get 21.7 milliohms or 0 0.0217 ohms. So it's not exactly twice, uh, but it's pretty close. So we can have some confidence that we're doing this correctly. Now, uh, let me disconnect this and turn my power supply off so that nothing unfortunate happens as we're moving wires around the bench. Uh, here's this, turn the batteries off here. So here's uh, a, uh, an LCR meter, which uh, has a four wire measurement built in to it. So this can measure a very, very wide range of um, resistances. And um, usually there are special clips for meters that have uh, the four wire uh, capability and they're called Kelvin clips. This meter did not come with Kelvin clips, although one can modify the meter to include that, but um, it uses alligator clips. Uh, and so let's see what, uh, what we get if we measure the resistance of this short piece of wire on this meter. I was going to think for a second, and we get 0 0.015 and uh, or 15 milliohms. And if you recall, when we did the uh, the the other method with four wires manually, we got 15.8 milliohms. So uh, this is in very good agreement. So let's just see what we get now if we measure roughly twice the length of that piece of copper wire like we did before. Let's hook this up like this and hook this up like this. Let it think. And it thinks that uh, it's a <laughs> and it thinks it's an inductor. Uh, so what we have to do is we have to cycle this through to the resistance and uh, and we get 0 0.021 ohms or 21 milliohms and what we computed earlier was 21.7 milliohms. So you can see that um, you know this instrument will do the four wire uh, resistivity or I'm sorry resistance measurement with the functionality of the meter or you can uh, set this up on the bench if you have a voltmeter and ammeter and a current limiting power supply. So why did I do all this? Well uh, you can see with these uh, clips, these alligator clips, that it's going to be very difficult to measure a probe, you know, the, the banana plug for which is, is shrouded in insulation. And in fact, that's part of the reason why these are shrouded in insulation. So you can't accidentally touch it uh, when you're um, inserting a potentially uh, uh, voltage or current carrying probe wire into a meter. So, uh, you know, if if I tried to force fit that alligator clip into this probe shroud, I might damage the probe shroud and I don't want to do that. Uh, however, I can easily insert a probe point into that to make a measurement. So that's much easier to do with the manual setup of a uh, four wire than, than, with, uh, than with this little meter. So off camera, I am going to measure with our four wire setup. Um, 
the resistance of each of the four probe leads that we looked at earlier and then compare. When each of these probes are measured uh, for the resistance using the four wire method, we get 19 milliohms for the probe master probe. For the probe that came with the amprobe meter uh, originally, we get 0 0.29 ohms or 29 milliohms. So comparably low resistance, uh, slightly higher than the probe master. Uh, for the a generic brand lead uh, get essentially the same as the amprobe, 0 0.31 or 31 milliohms. Uh, and so, you know, this is very interesting, but roughly we have 20 milliohms and 30 milliohms for the first three probes that we measure. When we look at the probe that came with the Tech Power DMMs, we see something shocking. We see 245 milliohms uh, or you know, over two-tenths of an ohm resistance. So this is an order of magnitude higher than, than these other probes. And is really indicative, I think, of the performance that we saw when we used these probes on that meter. So, you know, the question is, is does this really matter? Does the intrinsic resistance of test leads really matter? Will it affect the measurement? And the answer is, as we saw, uh, in the case of that previous video, yes, it does. It matters when you're measuring continuity uh, or when you're measuring resistance. Um, it may not matter enough to merit uh, using different leads, but it doesn't lead to a lot of measurement confidence when you know that you've got leads that uh, don't minimize the resistance in the first place. Now, it might be that this high resistance is due to some film or dirt on the test probe itself. And to that, I can answer, well, I washed it with isopropyl alcohol and I uh, uh, took a, uh, a sharp edge of a piece of metal and scraped it a bit. And I dug into the lead with an alligator clip to make the measurement to begin with. So there, it's really difficult to imagine that this is due to any sort of a thin film or insulating layer on the probe lead itself. So we performed an electrical measurement on a range of different test leads. Uh, and you've seen the good, the bad, the ugly. Or mostly what you've seen are good and ugly. So you tell me on a meter that might act like this with the test probes that it came with, I'm not rubbing these around. <laughs> I'm just holding them shorted and it's bouncing all over the place. And uh, so there's that. Or would you trust this better? You know, it's hard to say. Uh, some of this is due to the probe lead itself. and some of it is due to the design of the meter. Right? I don't like the fact that this meter uh, kind of floats around 0 0.1, 0 0.3 ohms, but you know, bouncing around 0.3 to 0.1 ohm range uh, seems fairly different from bouncing around in uh, the, you know, the 1.9 to 0.3 range. <laughs> so, you know, there's a range of two volts fluctuation versus, you know, roughly a tenth of a volt fluctuation. So anyway, I'm, I'm going to stop now with the cheap multimeter thread. These meters will absolutely suffice for measuring the voltage that I want to measure. They have large dials. You can read them easily. They're easy to grip. If I drop them I, uh, and break them, it's not the end of the world. This probably isn't the sort of meter that uh, you want to have on your bench for doing highly accurate uh, measurements. Uh, but that said, I think that I've made the point that um, having a decent set of test leads can uh, really make the difference. I hope you found that interesting. If you liked it, uh, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have comments, anything to add, please uh, list those down below. I'll link in a couple other videos and um, resources that talk about four wire measurements 
and Kelvin clips and uh, some other related topics. There will be more to come. Thanks a lot.